All right, what is going on, everybody? Uh, Physio Trader here. I'm gonna sit down, take a look at the market. So the markets are now closed. We are going into Friday, twelve seventeen. Will be tomorrow morning. Um, pretty much a red day overall for all of the market. So, uh, or or at least a uh, pretty red day for at least the stuff that I, I typically watch. Uh, overall, all the indices uh, traded red for the day. It seems like the red could not give up. The bit, best way to kind of take a look at that is, uh, you know what, here, let me just take my face out of the way. Um, you know, the weekly candle, sure, but this daily candle, I mean, just down, down she goes. Um, taking a look over here on the 30 minute, uh, if you're not familiar with the screen, uh, I do my live kind of morning coffee uh, rundown with this, but essentially, two minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute, or hourly, daily, weekly charts over here. Um, but taking a look, 30 minutes, a, a pretty much a fan favorite. Um, this bad boy went absolute bonkers, and, and this and many, many stock charts uh, went absolutely bonkers, mainly tech. Uh, after the Fed's decision to basically taper their asset purchasing, no more, no less than was kind of expected. So they, when they met expectations as far as a negative catalyst meeting or, or, you know, at expectations was exactly what everybody, you know, was kind of hoping for. That was the best case scenario. And so uh, the, the market really was selling off in anticipation of this, went down as 278 uh, for NVIDIA. I think the lowest it got was low 272s. Uh, and then just went absolutely bonkers to 304, 305 at the end, went all the way up to 307 and after hours, and then gapped up to 312, uh, went down to 309, back up to 312, and then just could not make the ultimate break above 312, 315. Uh, you can see over here, you know, this resistance line along with these guys, this support has now become resistance, has now become resistance. So, you know, that shouldn't be too, uh, too uh, kind of hard to put two and two together. So we'll just kind of Look at that. That was once upon a time with support. It has now broken that line. And because support uh, tends to become resistance, that is what we're looking at here. And so it has been an ugly, 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 ugly day for NVIDIA and many other stocks. Um, you know, as you can see, just the sell off, you know, sometimes uh, the market for the last several, the last year and a half has done nothing but go straight up. And it's not usual. If you are, you know, new to the markets or you've been involved in the markets for just the last year and a half, two years, you've seen a very unrealistic scenario where everything just goes straight up. And now people are starting to probably panic because now things are, are going down. Now, if you're, you've been involved in the market the last two years, you don't really even care much because you're already up multiple thousands of percent. But nevertheless, um, these are some ugly, ugly days. Um, uh, sorry about that. These are some definitely ugly days right here. But uh, essentially, you know, there was no place to really just buy the dip because the dip just kept on dipping. I mean, from 313 to 268 had a big gap up, which which kind of threw it off. It was like, I think, a percent or two, and it went down 7% or so. Um, actually closed a little bit higher, and then now is finding support around that 280 range. Um, I actually did sell a covered call. Uh, but then I made around, I think it was like $70 in the money. I put a stop in. I got stopped out around $52. Don't really care. I made the 52. Um, but taking a look at this, some key levels, I guess we'll go right back to it actually. So some key levels to look out for here. Um, this line seems to be something that was of interest. And I mean, you just can't make this up. Support, support, support. And now resistance so even if we do get a gap into this I, I do anticipate that that line is going to be you know somewhat meaningful it doesn't mean it's going to be the all end all you know be all but um, okay definitely resistance there and definitely one there um, you know, the question is, is, is this going to keep going to the downside? Uh, it might. One more trend line that I'm interested in seeing here is definitely going to be this one here. So I do anticipate after a 6% drop, I do anticipate that we're probably going to open around 287 to 290 and then actually continue with the blood, uh, especially because the option contracts are all over the place right now. But we do on the, the dailies, we do have this infamous uh, 50 period average that is going to actually act as a 
pretty probably strong barrier. Uh, and then of course, you know, like I said, just two days ago, we got as low as 272. Um, and so that, you know, bounced off there again. So, you know, is that going to come back into play? I don't know. I personally would really like to see a lot of things dip to their 200 period average. I would love to see, um, and, and, and not even that that you know, this dropping from 340 to 200 is a major crash unless you're you bought right at 344 the high. Um, but I, I would love to buy these stuff on sale. You know, 200 period average is going to be right around 204. The weekly is going to be same thing. I mean, this is going to keep going up over the weeks. This is going to keep going up over the day. So 220, that would definitely be a really big like, you know, throw your hat in the ring and, and get involved with that. Um, Apple, another ugly day for Apple. Apple started off bullish where everything was going down. Actually was headed up into the 180 mark, uh, 181. I think it got stopped around 182. Um, but Apple, you know, this I believe was all time highs, 182. I think at 186 is where it actually triggers to be a $3 trillion company. And uh, with all of that, you know, there's obviously a lot of people are really interested to be involved with that and they want to see this thing go up. But um, you got to expect there's going to be a lot of volatility. We had this yesterday. Um, so like I said, a lot of big movement to the upside, um, but this this sell-off right here, this is, or, you know, to be fair, this purchasing and this sell-off, I mean, th these are big traders. These are big, uh, big money. This is hedge funds. These are the whales getting in, um, but to go from 180 to set 170, I mean, that's a $10 move. That's 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 a quite the aggressive drop, 4%. Um, you know, NVIDIA was worse. Uh, but I definitely easily see this thing drop into 160, easily. Um, and like I said, I would actually like to see this thing drop even further. I just think there's just so much momentum and so much hype going on with it. Now, the one catalyst that I think would bring it down is definitely going to be that um, not just the asset purchases slow down, but they actually simultaneously start to raise rates. They've already agreed that they're going to raise rates three times. Um, I would actually love to see them raise rates um, e even more, I, I you know, unfortunately, uh, this administration just does not want to. They, they want to be too loose with their, you know, financial spending, and because of it, it is causing a lot of things to go haywire. Um, I, I think it was a guy named Sam. I don't remember his name. Um, on CNBC, basically said like it, it is completely fiscally irresponsible what they're doing at this point. They are absolutely just destroying. Um, the value of the dollar because there's there's no reason for them to be uh, purchasing asset backed mortgages or uh, mortgage backed assets or mortgage backed securities. There's no reason for all of these asset class purchases that they are doing because the market is so inflated. It, what what exactly are they propping up? You're supposed to prop up the market in a down economy, and um, the the. The economy is not nearly as down as they're they're kind of telling you it is, or or if it is, nobody's feeling it because the whales have become fat whales. Um, ADGI seems like this is definitely an area that has been kind of cooling right here, but you got to think if this area is going to break from a, a support line, then uh, back down she's going to go, especially because there's a lot of negative blood in this. I mean, this thing was in the 79s down to the five and a half. And let's see, when was it in 79? Not even a month ago. Not even a month ago. I mean, wow. Wait a minute. How long is this? 30 minute candle. From 34. Ooh, 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 ooh. To 10. Oh, that's ugly. Oh, that's an after hours. Oh, that's ugly. Yeah, somebody somebody really kind of, and rightfully so, lost a lot of money on that. Not rightfully so. Somebody, somebody's probably crying about that, and, and that's what I meant rightfully so on. Um, AMD, uh, Advanced Micro Devices, this is very similar to NVIDIA, so it's going to kind of behave the same way. So I'm kind of scrolling out just to kind of showcase that, yeah, this thing's got some pretty, pretty hefty pullbacks, um, but it's... Still way up. I think just last year, or before last year, this was like in the 30s. And then it, you know, here the farthest I can go back right now is the. It's in the 70s, but then all the way up to a buck 70. I think 179. No, maybe like 166 was its high. 
like 164 or so. So pretty pretty big sell off day. But you can see, I mean, this has had sell off days, gap ups, sell off day. Kind of went sideways, went sideways, back down she went. Big bounce, bigger drop. So thirty dollar drop here today in and of itself around a ten dollar move. Um, so. That's the line I think a lot of people are gonna be paying attention to. Yeah, I didn't draw that perfectly. Um, but this line I think is, is an area that uh, many, many people are going to be uh, looking at. And so with this line right here, uh, whoop. if this thing does wanna get down towards that 120 mark, oh, I don't know if you see this over here, but over here, nope. You know what, I actually like this line better. Yeah, this thing wants to get down to 175 or 125. That would be an interesting buy point. Um, this is a 30 minute 125. Let's just see what 125 looks like on a different time frame. Uh, wait a minute, why are you not loading? Every once in a while, Schwab will do this where the higher time frames have a harder time loading. Uh, normally, if you just kind of open up something else, no, these bottom ones do not want to change. Interesting. All right, we're going to skip this one for now. Ooh, it did break the 930s. Huh. I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but the, the bottom, these charts are not updating, which is annoying because I actually want to kind of showcase this. So here's a chart, actually I got, I, I guess two of these are gone, but basically sometimes in the morning I put this, I have sidecar, which is the label of this, this is kind of what I use the most for. All of these charts are linked. Or they should be these two are, are are bugging out on me but then I have these charts where there's actually um, supposed to be nine of them and they're all I change these every morning to like nine things I'm looking at this is like when I don't know which ones I'm gonna follow and I just want to get an overview of the nine the top nine things I'm looking at just to see which one wants to give me the most attention um, but to be fair I don't actually use that too often but this is kind of annoying I should preface and say this doesn't actually happen very often. You know what, I am going to uh, pause. I'm gonna close it down and, and reopen because this is... There we go. All right, we are back, baby. We are back in business, so over here, you know, since we talked about it, just kind of showcasing, same thing, just like Nvidia, this thing, you know, a lot of things have been selling off in anticipation of the Fed meeting. Boom, big money's getting into this. This could not break the $1,000 mark. And oof, like an $80 drop today. Um, uh, huh? Oh, yeah, so it only registers, so right here it says 49, but that's because it's it's actually stopping the earnings from here. So gapped up another 25, broke through that, couldn't hold. I mean, imagine all of the people buying the dip right now, and there's still another $40 down. Um, that hurts. So, you know, looking at this, um, I, I've said this for a long time. I would love to see Tesla back at 700. Um, to be fair, I think a lot of people would, um, but here's going to be a very big area to break, that 880 mark. Um, I do think if we break it, Oh, that's even more juicy. Look at all this support right here. Just want to showcase it just so you can kind of see, you know, support, 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 support. Now became resistance, became support or kind of resistance. 
support and then it finally broke through it that's when you know the gravy train was back so i'm i am thinking if this thing wants to make its way towards 780 i'm probably gonna buy like 800 dollars calls just for like a month out premiums will be high but if this thing keeps bleeding i think you know even if you get a bounce play of like 50 bucks which in tesla as you can see it can do that in a day it could print it could print pretty well but don't underestimate you know things going down in a bad market um, have this channel that has been drawn from some time or another. Um, I've been trying to get in the habit of not erasing these trend lines because they come into play more than you'd think. And this one has been here for, as you can see, quite a while. Um, and then this trend line came in to play, came into play. Boom, you didn't think it would come into play, but it's coming back, came back, came back broke through it now it's support or was support 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 resistance is broken um, this line i believe this is a nope support line not a fibonacci and then back down she goes so the question let's do a fibonacci again can we get the push towards this 50 percent i'm actually a big fan of the 6180 uh, percent. I don't know why. And this one is going to land right at 810, which you can see it coincides with my trend line. I like it. I would love to see Tesla down at that. I'm actually going to leave this line because I do want to see if it wants to stay there. So um, looking on a little bit smaller time frame, uh, we seem to be in a very clear cut trend line channel right now. I'm thinking tomorrow overall is going to be quite a buying time. A lot of people are think are we going to be interested in this. This support line is going to be like everyone's going to be having their eyes on these support lines. This little downward channel. To be fair, we've respected it to the most part. Um, you know, I would not be surprised in the slightest if we break above this and then oh wait, fail to break the 930. Um, and I'm going to show you two reasons why I think that we're going to fail to break this 930 mark. Um, step one is here. I mean, look at this. Support, 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 support. Held that support for a while, even broke through it, came back up, came back up, went back down. Um, but on the 930 mark, I believe it was the daily. I mean, look at these two, the last two days. 930 has been there and we broke through it and now we've lost you know another seven dollars and change in after hours i'm thinking this thing's going to gap down even more tomorrow and i'm thinking what's going to happen is we're going to gap down tomorrow maybe another percent or two people are going to be buying that dip and then that dip is going to be coming back to haunt people it's going to keep on dipping so the people who are buying the dip are going to be selling into the first 10 20 minutes and then we're going to keep on dipping and then after that people are going to start buying a ton of puts trying to see those uh those puts uh, print because tomorrow's Friday at the end of the day and if you're in a thousand dollar call right now you're gone you're, you're you're the likelihood of you not expiring worthless at this point is low so everybody who's got those high calls um, it's it's not coming back not for tomorrow at least uh, Apple AMD Nvidia Tesla AMC surprisingly AMC actually held on to quite a bit of its gains I don't know if this is to do with the uh, FBI probe getting into I mean it did sell off but seemingly you can see over here uh, the daily just popped right off the 20 I think it was like 2080 was the low uh, or it looks yeah was that 2080 2020 opened around 2080 this thing just went straight up to like 24 and then found support at 25 went back down sold off back up looks like we're headed back down on this one too for those of you who are the apes the self-proclaimed apes uh, that are diamond handing all the way through if you got in at like three or four or five eight dollars You're still doing great. Hopefully you were able to sell somewhere into this I mean you got to just love charts right here. I'd look at I mean this thing is just respecting this line Oh so much so even if this thing comes back you got to think that the 40s are gonna hold it to a different level Makes you wonder. I'm thinking there. 
then again, kind of a channel pattern. Looks like it broke a little bit too low. Uh, may, may come back and update that one later. But uh, I'm looking on the daily on this one. So big. I mean, it's no surprise. This is where it found heavy resistance the first time it broke out. This is when GME went bonkers. Um, no surprise that it found some support there. Like I said, these charts are just turning to be really just self-fulfilling prophecies. Palantir down at 18. Whoops, wrong one. Palantir down at 18. Just, just a while ago, it looked like this thing shot up from the 20s to the 27. 22, 27, Palantir 18. You know, I, I'd love to go long on this. If this thing wants to go back towards like the $8, $10 mark where it opened up on, um, I, I would love, I, I, I don't think I'd be, I don't, blah. I would not mind going long and holding this for a little while. You know, put in the retirement account a little bit. Um, Robin Hood, this one's been spanked over uh, for quite a while. Nothing just bleeding out. Um, and I've said it for a while now. I don't know if this thing has really even a good business model. Now, is payment for order flow, is it actually going to become illegal? Absolutely not. There, there's no way that payment for order flow is gonna become illegal. There's just, there's quite frankly, there's too much money to be made. Um, and a lot of people are benefiting from those air quote commission free. And, and a lot of the low hanging fruit right now is for the people that are invested into that. But man, I really wish I bought puts at 80 when I wanted to. Of course, that's kind of hindsight. If this thing went to like 500, it would have been a waste. But, got fly everywhere, kind of getting in the way. Um, nothing technically to look at on this one. I mean, this thing has no support. Uh, speaking of another one that has no support, Peloton. I think this one started to bounce. Ooh, a 3% green day. Here's my prediction. We can break 40, but if we do break 40, 42.75 is going to hold. Because again, look, support, 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 resistance. And now we have this down sloping resistance line as well. Now, does that mean it's going to break it and hold? Uh, it's going to fall back and collapse? Not necessarily, but I do think the 42.75 mark is going to get in the way. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to keep that one there, the 42.50. Um, you know, as this more time elapses, uh, this line is going to get lower and lower. Now, eventually, yes, it is probably going to break to the upside, but... Uh, we, we have no idea when that'll be. We have no idea how long the bloodshed will last in the down market. I mean, to be fair, we have not actually experienced a down market since 2020. 2018, I think, was like a whole quarter it was down. And then other than that, the rest of the market has just been absolutely bonkers since. And to kind of showcase that, let's just pull up the... No, oh, Peloton's not even that old. Let's see. Look at, like, Apple... Just to kind of showcase it, easiest one to see it on is going to be, this is 2012, this is 15, this right here is 2018. We were at like all time highs at one point at pre-price uh, split adjusted price at 56, 57, and it went down around 50%. A lot of the market lost around 50%, and that's when they were talking about raising rates. Boom, the market fell. And then, oh, they decided we can't raise rates anymore because that's what people need. And then insert here, unbelievable bull run and coronavirus. And then this is post coronavirus. So, um, you know, for, to people who are buying the dip is working. You know, you're out here, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. Yeah, sure, it's kind of annoying. You, you buy in here, you buy in here. And then let's see from 710, two years pass, three years pass, four years pass, and you're basically at the same point. But if you held for another four years, you made quite the return from four. Five dollars, so you five times your money. Then another four years, 
he actually went sideways. And another four years. Doubled your money. And now you've just had exponential, unbelievable returns. So, you know, just to showcase that, um, and it's not just Apple. I mean, really, any any tech stock has just made, like, unbelievable upward moves. I mean, I think everybody can agree that everybody wishes in 2012 they bought as much Tesla as they could afford for 7 bucks a share because that's crazy. So, anyway, just wanted to kind of talk about it and look at some things that are going on in the market. Um, you know, previously, the, the 50 and 200 period average does hold to be quite a very strong level, especially over there on those weekly candles. Um, so, you know, you could see, I guess we'll go back to the weekly candle. Going a little out of order here, but, you know, even during uh, pre-pandemic from 900, this thing fell, but it never actually broke the 50 period average on the weekly. I mean, it, this is just how powerful this chart is. And so, you know, if it does break that 770 and fall down, we still have a ton of resistant lines to break through before you even think about if this thing is really going to break down to 300. And to be fair, if this thing loses, you know, 60, 70 percent of its value, um, that would be a, I, I would buy, I think at that point I would just forget day trading and I would just buy as much as my account could, could fathom. And if it goes to nothing, well, I'd be the sucker at that point. So um, that is it for me. Um, you know, if you have any questions, definitely reach out in the comment section. Um, let me know and um, I'll catch you all tomorrow morning and let's see, uh, hopefully everyone has a nice green day.